What is up everybody? I'm going to be doing this little voiceover. First up, I'm showing you guys how to uh, change an exercise in the app. So you saw I went to the exercise with the three dots. I went to change the exercise. Clicked in this 45 degree back raise and I hit repeat until the end of the message cycle because what me and Mike decided to do basically was we wanted to um, go ahead and swap that out for this meso. Um, I think he wanted to do a little less axial fatigue and honestly I'm glad we did because uh, this is a little bit old footage but the leg session after this one I actually ended up slightly straining my hamstring on ham curls. Um, it was due to day trips back and forth from LA um, to film collabs so we did one of those uh, it was right there right back uh, three or four hours one way and then a bunch of driving around LA or then driving back the night prior I got like an hour or two of sleep wasn't sleeping well that week to begin with so basically um, <laughs> manage your sleep manage your fatigue things we all preach this was like week two of the Mesa cycle day one um, and then my my hamstring happened when we were gonna we decided to film with one of our people that were filming and uh, yeah, on the hamstring curl, just ended up straining my hamstring. It feels a lot better now. It's only been like a week, to, probably, but I'm just gonna emphasize the upper body here for a bit anyway. Really nurse that bad boy. So, elevating the front part of the pad um, so that it's kind of like the higher you can get that up, the more you're turning it into a hip hinge, straight leg deadlift variation type of thing. So, we are doing slightly elevated here getting a bit more of that hip hinge emphasis going on. Uh, try it out for yourself, it's really cool. Um, I am, I do like the glute, glute ham developer as well, it's not terrible, but this, this variation here turns it into more of like a hinging type of motion, like a good morning or something. So we did one big set, giant set. Um, can't remember how many reps I did there. Go ahead and count them up for, for yourself. <laughs> but I think it was like 25 maybe, if it tweaked too. And then Mike bought these yoga blocks because Arsenal doesn't know how to build uh, very good machines. Well, honestly, I'm not a fan of too many other pieces. The uh, hack squat, the leg press, and a couple other things are pretty decent. All their back stuff, just not a fan. Um, their Smith machine is always built wrong. So um, Mike needs the blocks because even though he is, like he's 5'6", it's not like there aren't a million people that are five six and below training at gym so it's odd that you can't get four engine motion on this bad boy so bought blocks um i'm warming up a shitload here and then mike i think does his first working set before me so he went ahead and did that and i'm gonna go ahead and type over here and pull up my other youtube video to see if i have some good questions because i'll try to do those segments again for you guys but mike did his first working set he potentiated with his weight um, I took a little longer to warm up this day. That's why the, the clips are in that kind of order. But <clears throat> it was really, um, it was a really good session. This was the, the last leg session I did before I hurt my hamstring, obviously. So um, things did go very well, though. I, I, I did have a really good session. Five plates um, on the hack squat. I'll do the, um, the uh, let's see, when I get a good editor, I'll do the screenshots of the app. So you guys can see how that works. Mike, the previous week, did, I think, 545. So he bumped up here, 585, and um, crushed it. He really crushed it. He honestly had a few in the tank, too, which was pretty damn cool. So, sorry about that. That was the intro. Um, but, yeah, he PR'd here. Um, I also hit a volume PR potentially at least within the last year at this body weight so here I am setting up for hacks this is my working this might be my working set it might be my potentiation set but regardless it's the same I make sure that each rep is the same um, yeah I'm definitely potentiating because I don't really pause between my reps so two and just to reiterate, potentiation sets are where you work up to either right above your working weight or at your working weight, and you do a couple reps to prime the nervous system, I'll put it in layman terms, 
for the sets to come. So that was my potentiation. My next set should be my uh, working sets. While I'm doing my working sets, I'm gonna go ahead and head over here, read a couple questions, because this is gonna be a really short video. I have about three minutes of questions I can get through. So, do I do direct volume for cats, worms, traps, and abs? I do not, actually. Um, I've done some calf volume, and I have done most the most out of this, I've done forearms. My traps grow from upright rows and uh, lateral raises pretty well. Um, I don't really do too much of that. My calves, um, they're huge genetically for sure. I did train them directly a couple times and they grew like an inch within six months. Um, my forearms also have a high affinity for growth so it's a lot of uh, just accessory from the bicep volume that I get. Um, so no, but they are big muscles for me, high affinity for growth. It's kind of the same with my rear delts. I don't train them directly too often. I'll just do a lot of rowing and shit like that. Um, it's very good. Someone asked for a peaking video on natural bodybuilding. If I remember to put this in the description, if I remember, sorry guys, like these videos are just kind of like getting shat out. I will put the video me and Mike did about natural bodybuilding peaking in the description here. Go ahead and click on that. Uh, Ethan Hawley, 5099. Um, I will try to put that here. If not, just go to Renaissance Periodization channel and type in natural bodybuilding peaking, Dr. Mike Israel, Jared Feather. I give a shitload of recommendations on papers and things like that there. Um, I have a question regarding how my triceps are back when it comes to chest press on the bench and dumbbells. My triceps are failing before my chest. There could definitely be a cue problem. I would say go back, watch a lot of the. Um, he's asking how to basically make his triceps not become limiting factor. One, get stronger triceps, obviously. That's not me being condescending. Uh, two, um, go back. Watch a bunch of our videos on the RP channel or on my channel and listen to the cues that I'm giving as far as like retraction, depression of the scapula, really emphasizing bringing the chest to the ceiling. And then what a lot of people do is they'll press here and they'll cave in. Try not to cave in. And if you get that forceful peak contraction in the chest, you can actually build a bit more metabolites in this specific tissue because this is going to be a lot of chest still, but it's more tricep front delt. So when I'm cueing people to do this the whole time, it's because I'm keeping that tension here on the chest and I'm probably protecting the shoulder a little bit. Um, I say that loosely, but most likely it is. Um, yeah, so guys, that's probably all the questions I'm going to get through on this one. I'm going to come back to this last video. So it was the secrets on like back growth with Mike and uh, I'm going to answer a few more of those in the next video. But if you leave comments on this one, I'll also get to those in a couple videos. Uh, I'm just kind of answering a few questions here and there. Keep asking them on here. I try to answer as many as I can in the comments, but I'll also answer some of the videos because people seem to like this little segment here. Uh, as much information as I can put out there for you guys, the better. Uh, again, as always, please leave comments for what I can do to improve, but like small ones because I'm not trying to invest too much time on this right now. I got a lot of shit going on with RP. But guys, seriously, thank you. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time.